Tom Cruise, it's been a pretty busy couple of weeks for the movie star. His relationship with Katie Holmes spawning a thousand tabloid headlines. He came here to our studio on Thursday for a freewheeling discussion. In the first part of our interview, we talked about his new love and his new movie as his fiance looked on. Anything at all interesting happening in your life these days? Nah, you know, same old, same yeah. old. Same old you know what? Same old you know what. How are you handling this? <laughs> I mean, every magazine. Every newspaper, every entertainment show. It, 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 what's it like for you to be to li be living through this right now? I have to tell you, it's uh, it's just a great time in my life. I'm really happy. I'm engaged. I'm going to be married, and uh, I can't restrain myself. You know, <laughs> you got, it's like you have two little cords on your cheeks, and your teeth know, just keep you know? showing. <laughs> Which is great. No, Congratulations. I was thinking much. about it. On the one Thank hand, you. it's got to be a little hard to see yourself everywhere, splashed across the pages. Another act aspect of this, though, is how many actors, twenty-something years into a career, can generate this kind of interest still. You know, I just do what I do. I love making movies, and I feel privileged to be able to do that, always. And it's something that uh, I'm just living my life. We'll talk about life in a second. Let's talk about the movie, though. Cool. Okay, War of the Worlds. I War mean, the worlds, I, I've always been fascinated by this whole concept, mm -hmm. the we are not alone in a big way mm -hmm. concept. Do you remember your first exposure to it, to the story? I remember uh, I was a kid. Uh, and I heard about the Orson Welles radio play. It was my first exposure to this story. This is not just an alien movie. The, the, the story breaks down on a lot of different levels, and in one, one of the levels, your character is a father. Mm -hmm. Not the best father in the world. When we were working on, on the story originally three years ago, Steve and I came up with this idea of making it about a family. It's okay. Want to go inside? It's okay. Huh? Want to go inside? Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> That's enough weather for me. I want to go by myself. And so now he is forced in these circumstances to rise to the occasion. Come on, like the 4th of July. No, it's not. Oh, say. And I just think it's, a, it's very human. I think that, you know, you're a father. Sure. I'm a father. You know, I always wanted to be a father. You know, remember when you first held your... Child was like, wow, tremendous sense of responsibility. Life changing. Yeah, and we talk about it, but it, and, I, and I even, you know, not until you experience it can you really know it. Uh, and so that, that's, I wanted, I wanted to imbue this story with that journey. Get down! Just get up! Get down! Get down. Is this a scary movie in the traditional sense of Hollywood scary? I think it's in the in, the, in, in Spielbergian scary. Is that a word? I, I, it now is. <laughs> I think you know you you Stevens movies are films that I I tease him because I say you know I know your movies better than you you know because I I know I've studied his edits so many times I've studied his movies. For Steven, it's not analytical. He's just creating, uh, and he has a tremendous power because he understands the medium and he's just that great 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 storyteller. Uh, I think he's the greatest storyteller cinema has ever known. Let's talk about selling this movie. So you've just toured basically around the world, mm -hmm. getting the story of War of the Worlds out there. And at the same time, you've got this great thing happening in your personal life that has become the subject of so many headlines and, and stories. <laughs> Any fear on has your... It really? Yeah, from what I've seen. You want to count? 3,400... Are you is, sure? Is there, <laughs> no, I made that up. Is there any fear in your part that what happens personally overshadows the movie? No, it never does. What's... You Does know, it I've, help the movie? I don't know. You know what? It's, it's, it comes down to the movie. It always comes down to the movie. You are being so much more open. You've been on this show in the past at times where you were in other relationships, and I kind of broached the subject of a personal life, and you would very gingerly steer it away. That was how we came to know Tom Cruise. And now you're saying, you know what? I'm okay with it. So it is a ch it, it does seem like a different guy. Yeah, but it's still, they're still writing it. You gotta understand, all that stuff was, they'd still write it. They'd still talk about it. And, and the thing is, is that I still feel that I always feel I will talk about what I feel, what I wanna talk about. Right. And I won't talk about what I don't wanna talk about. And it just doesn't matter. It comes down to the movie, you know? And I also feel, you know, Matt, I'm living my life. And, and, and I feel, uh, Man, I feel fortunate, you know? 
I'm, I feel really fortunate, and I'm excited. <laughs> you, but you, just, you just said something that made me think about something, and if you get out there and talk about it, it kind of takes away a lot of their power to make stuff up, doesn't it? Because you're telling the real story. Where does it leave them to go? Yeah, but here's the point. It's, I, don't, I don't even get into that game. I'm just living my life, man. It's, not, it's something that... Uh, I'm just living my life. And, and I'm doing the best that I can and doing it in a way that I feel is, is right. Uh, and I think that when... I like hearing good news, you know? I like hearing, you know, if something good happens to you, it's nice. I, I like sitting here talking to you. I mean, before when we were, you know, you're, you know, it's, it's... I like hearing good news from people. And it's something that I'm happy. So you know? if you like hearing it, you must want to share it, too. Yeah, and you know what? And I think it's... I. I don't have any problems. So when you hear you the know? cynics, Mr. Cruz, and you've heard them, who say this is publicity for a movie, this relationship, or this is Tom Cruise in his, <laughs> in his 40s trying to become or stay relevant for a younger audience. And that's why he's out there talking about this relationship with this lovely young lady who happens to be sitting right over there. How do you respond to that? You know what? There's always cynics. There's, there's always has been. There always will be. Do you laugh about it or just bug you? No, you got to just, I, I have never worried, Matt, about what other people think and what other people say. Katie, close your ears for a second, okay? You, you have said that Katie is the real thing. She is sensational. She's magnificent. Can you explain to me what she's brought to your life that hasn't been brought to your life in the past? You know, I don't want to compare things. I just say, I don't, yeah, I don't no, mean that. you know, no, no, because, you know, it, but, but what it is, it's that thing where you just, in life, when it just happens, man. You know, it's just you meet someone and it's, I can't even describe it. Katie has mentioned that she is embracing or at least exposing herself and opening herself up to Scientology. At this stage in your life, could you be with someone who doesn't have an interest? You know, Scientology is something that you don't understand. It's like you could be a Christian and be a Scientologist, okay? Scientology is something... So it doesn't replace religion. And it is a religion because it's dealing with, with, with... The, the spirit, you know, you as a spiritual being. And it's something that there's tools that, that you have that I can actually, that you apply to your life. Coming up, the mood changes a bit. You're going to see a fiery Tom Cruise talk about his attack on Brooke Shields, antidepressants, and Ritalin for kids. Here's a sneak peek. It's very impressive to listen to you because clearly you've done the homework and, and you know the subject. And you should. And, 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 and you should do that also because just knowing people who are on Ritalin isn't enough. You should be a little bit more responsible in knowing I'm really... I'm not prescribing Ritalin, Tom, and I'm not well, asking anyone else. It gets a little testy, and, and you'll see that coming up in our next half hour. And so look, the tone of the discussion took a turn. I've never agreed with psychiatry, ever. Uh... Before I was a Scientologist, I never agreed with psychiatry. And then when I started studying the history of psychiatry, I started realizing more and more why I didn't agree with psychiatry. And as far as the Brooke Shields thing is, look, you got to understand, I really care about Brooke Shields. I, I think here's a, a, a wonderful and talented woman. And uh, I want to see her do well. And I know that uh, psychiatry is... It's a pseudoscience. But, to, but Tom, if she said that this particular thing helped her feel better, whether it was the antidepressant or going to a counselor or a psychiatrist, isn't that enough? Matt, you have to understand this. Here we are today where I talk out against drugs and psychiatric abuses of electric shocking people, mm -hmm. okay, against their will, of drugging children with them not knowing the effects of these drugs. Do you know what Adderall is? Do you know Ritalin? Do you know now that Ritalin is a street drug? Do you understand that? The difference is no, this was no, not Matt, against Matt, her will, though. Matt, but Matt, this wasn't Matt, against your question. Will. Matt, I'm asking you a question. I understand Do, there's no, abuse of all of these things. No, you see, here's the problem. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. Aren't there examples, and might not Brooke Shields be an example of someone who benefited from one of those drugs? All it does is mask the problem. Matt. And if you understand the history of it, it masks the problem. That's what it does. That's all it does. You're not getting to the reason why. There is no such thing as a chemical imbalance. So postpartum depression to you is, is Matt, kind of a little psychological 
gobbledygook? No, no, I did not say that. I'm just asking what you no, what would you no, call it? Abs that Matt, that is that post. Now, now you're talking about two different things. But that's what she went on the no. antidepressant for. But what happens the antidepressant? All it does is mask the problem. There's ways of vitamins and through exercise and various things. I'm not saying that that isn't real. That's not what I'm saying. That's an alteration of what, what I'm saying. I'm saying that drugs aren't the answer. That these, these drugs are very dangerous. They're mind-altering, antipsychotic drugs. And there are ways of doing it without that so that we don't end up in a brave new world. The thing that I'm saying about Brooke is that there's misinformation, okay? And she doesn't understand the history of psychiatry. She, the, she doesn't understand in the same way that you don't understand it, man. But a little bit what you're saying, Tom, is you say you want people to do well, but you want them to do well by taking the road that you approve of, as opposed to a road that may work for them. No. No, I'm not. Well, if, if antidepressants work for Brooke Shields, why isn't that okay? I, I disagree with it. And I think that there's a higher and better quality of life. And I think that promoting, for me personally, see, you're saying, what, I can't discuss what I want to discuss? No, you absolutely I know, can. But, but Matt, you're going in and saying that that I can't discuss that. I'm only asking, isn't there a possibility that, do, do you examine the possibility that these things do work for some people? That yes, there are abuses, and yes, maybe they've gone too far in certain areas. Maybe there are too many kids on Ritalin. Maybe electric too shock. Too many is, kids on Ritalin. Matt, I'm just saying, but, but aren't there Matt, examples where it Matt, works? Matt, Matt, you, you don't even, you're glib. You don't even know what Ritalin is. If you start talking about chemical imbalance, you have to evaluate and read the research papers on how they came up with these theories, Matt. Okay, that's what I've done. And you go and you say, where's the, where's the medical test? Where's the blood test that says how much Ritalin you're supposed to get? You're, you're, it's very impressive to listen to you because clearly you've done the homework and, and you know the subject. And you should. And, 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 and you should do that also because just knowing people who are on Ritalin isn't enough. You should be a little bit more responsible in knowing I'm really... I'm not prescribing Ritalin, Tom, and I'm not well, asking anyone else to do well, it. Well, you are. You're saying... saying no, I know you're, some people who seem to have been helped by I, it. But you're saying... But it's like, this is a very important issue. I, this I is couldn't a very, agree more. And you know what? And you're, you're here on the Today Show. Right. And to talk about it in a way of saying, well, isn't it okay and being reasonable about it when you don't know, and I do. I think that you should be a little bit more responsible in knowing what it is, but, because you, you communicate to people. But you're now telling me that your experiences with the people I know, which are zero, are more important than my experiences. What do you mean by that? You're telling me what's worked for people I know, or hasn't worked for people I know, and I'm telling you, I've lived with these people, and they're better. So you're, you're advocating it. I am not. I'm telling you, in their <laughs> case, like, in their Matt? individual case, it worked. I am not going to go out Matt, and say, get your kids on Ritalin, it's the cure-all and the end-all. Matt, but here's the point. What is an ideal scene in life? Okay. Uh, ideal scene is someone not having to take antipsychotic drugs. I would agree. Okay, so now you look at and you go, okay, a, a departure from that ideal scene is someone taking drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you go, okay, what is the theory and the science behind that that justifies that? Let me take this more general because I think you and I could go around in circles on this for a while and, and, and I respect mm -hmm. your opinion on it. Do you want more people to understand Scientology? Is that, would that be a goal of yours? You know what? I, absolutely, of course. You know, How do people, you go about that? You just communicate about it and the important thing is like you and I talk about it, whether it's, look, if I want to know something, I go and find out because I don't talk about things that I don't understand. I'll say, you know what? I'm not so sure about that. I'll go find more information about it so I can, I can come to an opinion based on, on the information that I have.